What's up guys, Double Dog Gamer here. Today we are playing the Hunt Showdown, showing off the new Tides of Shadows and their new boss, Ratja. He's a sneaky little alligator that likes to hide out in the rivers and have some pretty cool attacks, including electrical attacks. And he's kind of a fun little boss to kind of go and track down. But I'd like to thank the Hunt Showdown for sponsoring today's video. We're going to go and talk a little bit about what Tide of Shadows has to offer. Tide of Shadows also brings a new battle pass, both free and paid if you want to get a little ahead on the time. And with it, you can get event points to kind of push through the battle pass. You get them for doing things like an event clue or a rift, start to banish a boss, extracting with a bounty token, or interacting with a ship altar, which are found all over the map, and you can do them all around to get more event points along the way. Of course, you can become, you know, loot an enemy hunter to get more tokens, or you can do the dark tribute, which you can do one time each day to get a large amount of event tokens. You can use this as the battle pass to get all things like the new weapons, uh, new items, and even some of the new uh, actual players that you can play. We also get a new wild card condition called the Thunder Shower, which happens randomly through the match. This is a crazy thunderstorm with very heavy rain, which obscures your vision quite a bit and also muffles all the sound around you because of how loud the rain is. And Hunt Showdown sound is king. That's how you track people, that's how you can hear people, and it's one of the biggest things that you do with PvP. So these thunder showers are critical moments in PvP to be able to kind of secretly get away or sneak up on enemies that you know are around, and they happen randomly, and they're a really cool addition to the update. With the new update, we also get new packs. Now these packs are always found at each of the supply posts, and you can pledge them one time each through each game and they're used with your event tokens and things like that. There's a few different packs that are available and they're actually pretty cool. The primal pack, your first one is while you're in dark sight, you can sense when enemy hunters are nearby within 75 meters. Now this actually shows like a red like aura in your dark sight. This is really good for solo players. I found this super helpful myself when I was getting into some fights because I knew when enemies were around and being a solo player going up sometimes against teams of three, it's really important for me to know that other people are around. The second pledge of it, you won't lose a health chunk when you're downed. This is a really good uh, piece for it, too, especially if you are working in a group. You don't lose a chunk of health when you're getting downed. Then you get the Smuggler's Pack, which does health restoration and is greatly increased while you're in the water, so you can actually restore health while in the water. And you also get Gunrunner, which removes the contraband status from main weapons on extraction. That's a really nice thing. Then you have the Grounded Pack, which Shadow is the first one. Monsters can't see you, but they can still hear you. So you can sneak by monsters really fast. This is a really good one, again, for solo players. So you got to either pick Primal or Grounded. The second one is Remedy. While you're using Dark Sight, interact with the trait to trigger a restoration effect cylinder to banning your, of your team's hunters. That's another really good one. So between Primal and Grounded... It's kind of hard, you know, which one I want to do. <laughs> but you also, with the packs, you can do, once you get three pledge marks, you can get Death Cheat, which in exchange for all your pledge marks, you will not lose your Hunter if you fail to extract. This is another really good one if you're a solo player and really awesome to use. These packs are really awesome, especially for solo players, and I highly suggest using them. We also now get the Choke Beetle. This is an interesting thing in the game. Now, especially as a solo player, this one was really nice for me. Um, the Choke Beetle is basically a beetle you throw out that you can control. Think of it as a drone. You can look around the map, you can find enemies, and, you know, spot where enemies are without having to expose yourself. Now, the cool thing about it is when you do see an enemy, you can fly up to it and explode yourself to use the choke and basically kind of choke them out. This is an awesome tool for a solo player to be able to kind of hit an enemy, move up, and kill them and not only that but spot around and if you think you're in danger i really like this addition and it kind of changes gameplay especially as mainly a solo player now raja is very much an interesting boss and he's an interesting boss to fight solo as i've had no real luck fighting him solo but i'm going to tell you how to find him and kind of some things i've learned along the way now the same with any of the clues from the main bosses you get them for raja they're usually found around the edge of rivers now you go up and you interact and it'll start to show point away it'll kind of once you interact with it it'll point away that you need to go you kind of just follow the line and go that direction pick up more clues along the way follow the line now if it all leads to the same river you know he's probably on that river somewhere. Now, when you first encounter Raja, he will be on the edge of the water, allowing you a nice first shot. Now, once you get that first shot off, he's in the water for good, and you will have to fight him in the water. Now, he will surface occasionally for you to take a shot at, 
and make him mad. And sometimes he'll pop out of the water when you do damage, and you can take an extra shot on him to do a little more damage. But the main way to get him out to do damage is, well, wade into the water. You'll have to wade into the water until you get the movement debuff from being deep enough in the water. And therefore, you'll start to see it bubble. Now, I learned later, after a few attempts, you can actually shoot those bubbles and do damage to him. The way I was doing it before was letting him backing up as he was coming towards me enough to where he would pop out, do a little bit of damage to me, and then engage him from there and try to get him low enough. Um, now, as a solo player, I usually didn't have enough ammo to take him out, so I'd have to run to a resupply point, resupply again. And then, again, as another solo player, all my noise would usually attract other people. Now, you can use different things like the Bomb Lance. I don't have the Bomb Lance unlocked, but that seems like to be the best way to do it. The way I would recommend to do it is to get him on the shore, wait for him to kind of surface on his own a little bit, get that extra shot off of him there, shoot him when he freaks out, and then from there, bait him when you see the bubbles, shoot back out. Bait him, shoot the bubbles when he shoots, and back out. That seems to be the best way to do it, but it is difficult to do solo unless you're pretty high level. But it is doable. It's not that hard. And once he's up on shoreline, usually around the rivers, he's pretty open in the area. So I would say, instead of maybe going for Raja, go for the people that are going for him because they're going to be stuck in a river. And if you time your shots right, you might get them stuck where they can't really wade fast in the water. I think that's probably the best way to get him or the people getting him. Now is really the best time to get into the hunt sh showdown. It is one of the best extraction shooters out there. If you're really burned out with Escape from Tarkov, don't want to play it anymore, I highly suggest checking this out. It's available for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox, and this is one of the biggest updates ever, and it's a two-month-long update with the Tides of Shadow. The event lasts for two months, gives you plenty of time to get everything done. This is a really unique PvP, PvE game extraction shooter, and I think one of the better ones. There's so many variables, so many things to do with this um, that there's plenty for you to dig into, and once you get into the depths of it, you will really be hooked. So I highly suggest you check out the Hunt Showdown. I'll have everything down in the link in the description below for you guys. If you guys want to check it out, highly suggest it, especially with how boring gaming has been lately. Even if you haven't played Hunt Showdown for a while like me, I'm really hooked again on it. I'm really loving it. And you should check it out too. So let me know what you guys think of the Hunt Showdown down in the description below. Talk to you guys later. Peace.